Warlord is a strategy card game usually played 1v1. What's unique about it is that it's d20 based, so you roll a 20 sided die for just about everything in the game. Both players have a deck, a starting army, and a warlord. The basic goal of the game is to kill your opponent's warlord. All starting armies will look like this, with three level 1 characters in what's called the first rank, two level 2 characters in the second rank, and your warlord, usually a level 4 or 5 character, in rank 3. Breaking down cards now, there are three basic card types. Characters, actions, and items. Characters have an attack, AC, or armor class, skill, and hit points. This symbol here shows a character's class, of which there are four. Cleric, Rogue, Wizard, and Fighter. A circle means a character has no class. It's also often used when a character has more than one class, rather than displaying one class or the other. The number is the character's level. The colored border of a character shows its faction, which is also noted in its text box. There are seven factions, which my other Learn to Play video describes in more detail. The other bold words describe the character's other traits. When playing a character from your hand, it enters play in a rank equal to its level. However, a character entering play may not create an illegal rank. Illegal ranks will be discussed later in the video as well, but essentially you can't put a character into play if that would make it so that there are more characters in that rank than the rank in front of it. If a character entering play is not a mercenary or does not share a faction with your warlord, it enters play stunned instead of ready. Action cards have a class, level, and text. This text may be an order, react, or some other ability that stays on the board for a while. To perform an action card, a character must have a level that is equal to or greater than the level of the action, and the classes of the character and the action must match. For example, a 5th level fighter character can perform level 5 or lower fighter actions, but can't perform any actions that are either greater than level 5 or from a class other than fighter. It is worth noting that cleric and wizard action cards are classified as spells, even though it doesn't actually say so anywhere on the card. This is relevant when using cards that reference spells. Items have an attack bonus and or AC bonus, class, level, and text. This text may also include traits such as weapon, shield, or armor. To equip an item, a character's level plus the rank it is in must be equal to or greater than the level of an item, as well as matching the classes. For example, a 5th level fighter in rank 3 can equip a level 8 or lower fighter item. A character cannot equip more than one item with the same trait, such as two weapons. If a character has a weapon equipped and wishes to equip a new one, simply discard the currently equipped weapon for the new one. Any item with the curse trait cannot be discarded for a new one. A character also cannot discard an item to equip a duplicate of the same item. There are some actions, items, and characters that will require you to do a DC save. To do this, roll a d20, add your skill to the result, and see if the total meets or exceeds the number on the DC save. If it does, you succeed. If it is less than the save number, you fail. Moving on to how the average turn flows, both players draw until they have 5 cards in their hand, then roll a d20 initiative roll to determine who goes first. Both players go back and forth performing actions, otherwise referred to as decrees, until both players pass. After that, the players decide which remaining cards in their hand, if any, they want to keep for the next turn. Discard the rest and draw until they have 5 cards in their hand, and the next turn starts. On their turn, there are several actions a player can take. First, there's attacking. To attack, you need to tap a ready character. All strikes must target in an adjacent rank, so all standard attacks or melee strikes are done from the front rank, targeting a character in an opponent's front rank. To attack, declare the target of the attack, roll a d20, and add the die result to the character's attack bonus. If the result meets or exceeds an opponent's AC, one wound is inflicted. If a character has a number of wounds equal to its health, it is killed. Any character with a slash between its attack bonus means that it has that many strikes when it attacks, and each strike has that respective bonus. In addition to melee strikes, there are also ranged strikes. A ranged strike can target an additional rank away, but cannot target within one rank. A character can only perform a ranged strike if it has something printed on itself or an item that says it can, or performs an action that lets it do a ranged strike. A character may also perform an order printed on itself, an item it has equipped, or from an action card. An order can be performed whether a character is ready or spent. 
There are also spend orders. To perform a spend order, a ready character must spend as part of the cost to perform it. Similarly, there are abilities called reacts and spend reacts. These do not require a decree or action by a player. Rather, they are played as a sort of intervention. Any react will have some line of text clarifying when to use it, followed by a line of what the react itself actually does, separated by a colon. Like orders and spend orders, a react can be performed by a spent or ready character, as long as they can legally do so in the instance of action cards, but a spend react can only be performed by a ready character who must then spend. As a decree, characters can also maneuver, also known as moving. A character can spend to move forward one rank, backward one rank, or to a different position in the same rank. A rank cannot have more characters in it than the rank in front of it. If this happens, it's an illegal rank and you must immediately correct it. This is instantaneous and does not require a decree to do. To correct an illegal rank, you must choose a character in the illegal rank to immediately fall forward until there is no longer an illegal rank. When falling forward, ready characters become spent, spent characters become stunned, and stunned characters falling forward simply continue falling. There's no status beyond stunned. Stunned characters can do literally nothing. They cannot attack, maneuver, perform actions or abilities printed on themselves or items they have, or equip items. Here are a few examples of movement and illegal ranks. If an opponent kills a character in your first rank, so you now have more characters in your second rank, one of them immediately falls forward before you take your turn. If you move a character in your fourth rank forward one rank, a character in your third rank must fall forward, then a character in your second rank. You can also choose to stun a character all the way up instead of having different characters fall. This is often done just to get bigger characters with more hit points in the front rank to help hold your ranks. There are a couple notable traits worth discussing as well. Characters with the planar trait can only be hit by an even die roll, and this is specifically the result of the roll itself, not an even result when adding your attack bonus to the roll. A lot of older cards either have the astral or ethereal traits printed on them, it used to be the case that astral characters could only be hit by odd die rolls, and ethereal only by even. These were combined into planar in a later edition, so anything with either of those traits is now considered planar instead, and only even die rolls hit. Spells, however, ignore the planar trait completely. Whether it be an actual spell or something that says it is treated as a spell, it completely ignores the planar trait. There are also several cards with the epic and unique traits. Any deck cannot have more than one copy of the same epic card. You can have multiple epic cards in your deck, as long as they're different, but not more than one copy of the same card. You also cannot have more than one of any card with a unique trait in play at the same time, but can still have up to three copies in your deck. As with the epic trait, you can have multiple unique cards in play at the same time, as long as they're not identical. Lastly, there are what is called feats. These will appear on a card as a bold text, followed by a bonus. To perform a feat, a character must first be in the proper circumstances for it. For example, the power attack feat is performed after targeting a melee strike, but before rolling the attack. When using a feat, roll a d20, add the bonus of the feat, and your skill. If the total meets or exceeds 20, you succeed. The previously mentioned power attack allows you to do one additional wound on a melee strike if you succeed with the check. There are 10 feats total, but taking the time to explain each of them individually here would add several minutes to an already long video. I'll have a link in the description for a page explaining all of the rules for the game. All the feats and their descriptions can be found near the bottom of the page just above the glossary. Any item that has a feat on it either gives you that feat if you don't already have it, or adds to an existing bonus if you do have it. Finally, let's talk about deck construction. A deck must consist of at least 50 cards. However, this includes the six characters in your starting army, so the deck itself is actually at least 44 cards. No more than half of the deck can consist of the same type of card, whether it be actions, items, or characters. And again, the six characters in your starting army count towards this limit. You can have up to but no more than three copies of any card in your deck. You also cannot have any warlords in your deck beyond the one that starts in play. And that'll do it for the overview. As I mentioned before, I'll link a website with the rules in the description. That website, Saga of the Storm, is an all-around great resource for any questions you may have and has pages for upcoming events, whether they be in-person or online. 
The Accord Lens, which I'll also link below, is an online database with all the cards. It's an incredibly helpful resource, both for looking up individual cards or building whole decks. I'll also link a video between myself and YouTuber SlyFox if you'd like to watch some actual gameplay. Other than that, the Warlord CCG, Facebook group, and Discord are great places to connect with other players and find people to play against. Thanks a lot for checking out the video, and I hope it was able to be a helpful resource.